Some people say famous people have everything. In many ways it's true. They have fancy cars, houses, but until now they had the most important thing of all. Something that we're going to take back. The ability to put their name into stable diffusion. If you've been online the last few days, you've probably heard about a new technology called Dream Booth or Textual Inversion. This provides a way to add your own training data to Stable Diffusion. This means you can add yourself, friends, family, or characters that you've created. However, it had steep hardware requirements which put it out of reach of most people. Fortunately, it's now possible to run it for free using Google Colab. I've provided the link in the description. So to get started, click the Open in Colab button, where you'll get taken to a Colab notebook. I recommend making a copy of the notebook and saving it in your Google Drive. That way you can make changes and save them. Once you've done that, go to the runtime, change runtimes type, and make sure that you've got GPU set under hardware acceleration. After that, just hit the connect button to set up the new Colab instance. It will take a little while to connect, so just wait for the status to change to connect. A Colab notebook is broken up into a series of steps, or cells. You press the play button to run an individual cell. Start by running the first cell. We need to check that the instance has been assigned at least 16GB of RAM. If it hasn't, you may need to terminate the instance and try again. Once that's done, we're just going to work our way through each cell, running it one at a time. When you get to the login to Hugging Face section, you'll be asked to enter a token. If it's your first time doing this, there's a couple of steps. You want to go to the Stable Diffusion 1.4 page and hit Access Repository. Then you'll be asked to create a Hugging Face account, which you'll need to do. Once the account is created, you go to the account profile and then Access Tokens and create a new Access Token. Copy it and paste it into the token field and hit Login. The next cell is where you set the class name. You want to make sure this matches the kind of images that you're training it on. So if you're training on pictures of a woman, then you want to use woman. And if you're training on a man, then you could use guy or man. Or if you're training on a dog, you would use dog. You'll get to a section where you need to upload images. For this you'll need around 16 images of the subject. It's recommended that you use a variety of angles such as close-up photos of their face, full body shots, and a range of different lighting and locations. All the images need to be 512 by 512 and square cropped. So here we're just using an online tool to create the cropped images for us. Now that the image is uploaded, we are onto the last cell. This is where you actually train the model. There is an important option here, which is the max number of steps. If you increase this number, it will increase the training time, but also increase how similar the output is to the trained images. If the step count is too low, the output will only vaguely resemble the original input. Too high and the output will too closely resemble the training set and look kind of deep fried. Whatever step count you choose, it's going to take a while, probably around 30 to 30 minutes to an hour and a half. Once the model's finished training, we can go on to inference. The key thing to remember when writing a prompt is that you need to include the keyword SKS as well as the class name, in this case woman. If you've changed the class name earlier, just make sure you update it in the prompt. When the last cell runs, we can now see that Stable Diffusion has learned a new character. 